Today we're going to show you how to take a rastered, pixelated, terrible logo and turn it into a vector. I want to keep it simple, we're going to keep this tutorial short, but I want to show you how to take your existing logos or your existing designs from Photoshop that are raster and bring them into Illustrator. We're going to use two different tools here. I'm going to show you how to kind of build it from scratch and then I'm going to show you a shortcut of how to do this with what we call the image trace tool. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so here we are. We got the logo up on here. I've already set it up in Adobe Illustrator. And as you can see, if you don't know what a rastered image is, raster is pixels. So if someone's asking you, hey, I need a vector logo, and you're trying to figure this out, and you're Googling it, and you're YouTubing it, and you found this tutorial, I want to make sure that you walk away with clarity of what that means. So Illustrator is paths, and Photoshop is pixels. And what I mean by paths, and I'll show you here, as you can see here in Illustrator, there's an anchor point, an anchor point, an anchor point, an anchor point. These are all anchor points that create the box shape. But this is not a vector image, it's just selected a vector size of what the image size is. So what we wanna do is take this logo and turn it into a vector image. So what I'm gonna do to make it easy is I'm just gonna hold down Alt or Option and I'm gonna click and drag and duplicate it onto my next artboard here. It doesn't need to be perfect or centered or anything like that right now. Just wanna get it on here, there we go. And then once I'm on here, like I said, there's two ways to do this. First way I'll show you is very quick and easy. You can go to the image trace tool and pick one of these and just hit this logo here, hit this little icon, boom. And you can see now if I hit command Y, which shows me, whoops, I have to embed this actually. There we go. And if I hit command Y, you can see the actual paths now. So it's not pixels. And no matter how big I make this logo, it will never distort because it's vector. It's a clean, really, really nice image. Now, the good thing about the image trace tool, let me just go back a step here, is the fact that you can actually fine tune an adjustment. Some people think that these are your only options, but that's actually not the case. If you go over to your window, you can see here, where does it say image trace? I'll find this here, image trace. You can click that open and boom. Now you have an advanced panel that's gonna give you a lot more options. You can see this little advanced tool here. What I do is I hit this and I hit the preview button. Okay, and you can see here, look from logo to logo. If you'll notice that these nice squared edges, these are not squared, it's rounded it. And why it's done that is because of the paths and the corners and the noise and the threshold. So we're gonna make some adjustments to this. We're gonna bring this in a little tighter. And as I go up in my threshold, it should make it closer and closer to the actual original logo. You can see here, whoops, if I go all the way to the top, it's gonna get rid of it. So you can see it's kind of jagged, just doesn't look very well, right? So you're gonna have to adjust your paths and find out that right, just the right dimension here, the right settings, and you may have to play with it. I might have to go to 95. You can see here, that's just too rigid. Now it's just pixelated, right? So I'm gonna go back down. I'm gonna try to find that exact right. This is getting pretty close now. And then I can also adjust my corners. So if I want it to be more rounded versus less rounded, I can go in here and I can adjust that and actually make them more squared. And you can see here, that's a pretty good copy, but there's just still some, some jaggedness and imperfection. So I can go in here to my noise and I can adjust this and see if that helps. Doesn't look like it did a whole lot as I'm going up and down through here. And then I can also go back into my thresholds and just fine tune and make some adjustments here and really get this thing to look the way I want it to. This is probably the fastest way that you can do it, but I wanted to use this logo. I, I picked a pretty simple one because I wanted to illustrate something too. And you can see it's kind of over here. It's kind of jagged so this is actually starting to get really close now I can adjust my paths there we go like I like that but that's still rounded I want to keep my jagged edges that's too jagged there I just want to get this right how I would probably personally do this because it has typography in here and I want the type to look really really good is I would take this logo let me just scoot this up a little bit I would copy this and because these are really simple paths this is something I'm going to show you how to do you're gonna use the pen tool. So it's kind of like a bonus tutorial. So I'm gonna go like this. You can see I'm gonna click here, I'll go up here, I'll click here, I'll create that shape. Then obviously I can just go in here and create a circle. I can click and drag in the corner, go up to the top of this, go to the left of it, click and drag, make a nice circle there. Then I'm gonna go use my pen tool again and I'm gonna go up in here, hit this, come down to here, hit this one. I'm gonna go right to here. I'm gonna adjust that, boom. Do the same thing right here, click and drag. In fact, I'll probably go up to here and then I'll go up into here. Let's see here, right into the corner and make this even bigger to make this easier for you. So I'll go like this and then I'm gonna go 
like this, right? And then I'm gonna click all the way up to the top here, click and drag, click and drag. And again, I'm going kind of quickly because I just wanna get the point across to you. Then you can go back in here, I can go like right here, maybe meet up where the other anchor is but right above it and just hold shift and drag, right? And so just kind of follow that same line. Now when I come up to here, I can continue to follow that same line. And now here I already have the J practically done. So I can go up in here, connect these two. Now you'll see here, I have my pass. Look what I've already created in just a short amount of time. It's clean, it's vector, and I can scale this to any size. Now let's go over here to the B. We'll do the same thing. I'm gonna show you a cool trick that you need to know. You're gonna do this really well. I'm gonna go like this, I'm gonna drag this up. Same thing here, click and drag. And I can actually turn this inside out so you have just the outline so that you're not, it's not hard to draw. Boom, right there. Same thing, I'm gonna take now, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click and drag this because this is in my way. I'll probably just make it match up evenly with this. And then I'm gonna bring this up probably to here. No, I'm actually gonna need to adjust this. So I'm gonna bring this up like this towards this way. There we go, I'm gonna click and drag. There we go, that looks pretty good. Do the same thing here, click. I'm gonna go up in here, drag. So you're just gonna follow this path around. Now I gotta do the same thing for the inside. Right, but one of the things I wanted to show you here, click and drag, boom, go up here, click, and then up here, click and drag. I want this to look as clean and to match as closely as possible to that JBL. Now I can just probably copy this, click on it, hold down Alt or Option, click and drag. And what I'll do here is I'll just make this bigger because you can tell this one's a lot bigger on here. Bring this in a little bit, boom, perfect, that looks nice. Then I got the L, it's the last letter I got left here. Let me go back to my L tool. And it's like these two are actually pretty similar, but I'm just gonna draw it anyway. So I could do that, boom, boom, boom. Makes it pretty easy when you have a simple logo to work with. If you have a more complicated logo, you're gonna have to probably take more time. This is not gonna be as quick as what you're seeing here, but it's important to just know that you're gonna have to follow these lines this way. If you can't get the image trace to work for you the right way, the way you want it with this advanced panel here, you're gonna have to hand draw it. That's just, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And then obviously the last piece that I need to do is recreate that rectangle. It's almost a square. I'm gonna click and drag that rectangle. If I wanna color it the same, and go in here, hit that color, boom. Now I delete the image behind it. Okay, and I forgot to show you this trick. So now that you're in here, remember I turned those outlines on. So let me flip it back, there we go. And then I had those two shapes on the inside. What I'm actually gonna do is create what's called a compound path. So you're gonna select those two inside, then you're gonna select the thing that you wanna compound it to. I'm gonna go over here to the Pathfinder tool. I'm actually gonna hit this minus front. Boom. And now this is one object. So here we go. I've been able to create the entire JBL logo in just a few minutes here. Let me actually remove this one. You can see here, I'll put these all side by side to each other, boom and grab this, and I'm gonna group this together. So let me hit Command G or Control G to group it all. So I can put this in here, and you can see the accuracy of this version, even over this version, is better. It's nice and crisp and clear and clean. It actually looks just like the JBL logo. No one would ever know the difference. And I was able to create this in just a few minutes. So that's my tutorial for you. If you guys want to know more about this or have a specific question, definitely drop in the comments your question. I just wanted to keep this very simple. I will do another one of these that is gonna be more focused around specifically logo design that goes a little bit deeper on how you can take your logo designs and turn them into vectors and just some extra little bonuses there. But look out for that video. I hope you enjoyed this one and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. As always, keep looking up.